Hello everybody, um, today I'm going to uh, run you through uh, how to convert your standard RC controller into a one-handed RC controller. Um, now, uh, I haven't posted any videos for a long time on YouTube, but uh, I felt like this was worth sharing with everybody. Uh, a couple of weeks ago, as you can see, I did some rather nasty damage to my hand, and after spending a lovely four days in hospital waiting for surgery, I had plenty of time to think about how I was going to do it. Um, I spent a bit of time on the net having looking around at other things that people have done and um, discovered that there was more people uh, needing a one-handed controller than there were solutions. Um, one of the solutions was to convert a standard joystick controller to fly your RC planes, but it's uh, not particularly simple. Um, there's some complicated programming involved and and even if it is done simply, uh, it's still not really a full function controller. So after going through a heap of other overly complicated solutions, I came up with this one, which is this right here. Now I'm going to do a couple of uh, uh, videos showing exactly how I've done this. I'm going to pull this controller apart and show you all the workings. Uh, it's actually incredibly simple. You don't need any great amount of skill to do this. Uh, and when you're done, once your hand's better, well, hopefully if it gets better, you can then put your controller back to exactly how it was. Uh, the other good thing about it is that it can be done regardless of whether you've hurt your right hand or your left hand and whether you're a mode 1 or mode 2 flyer. Um, obviously you need to have a little bit of practice before you go and try and fly for real with a simulator or a buddy lead or something like that. Um, uh, and then when you do fly I recommend using something that's fairly simple and easy to fly, lightweight, something like this foamy of some description. Undercarriage is nice but not necessary if you've got someone you can throw it for you. And um, these days, I mean it's only been uh, three or four days since I've started flying with it and I'm already flying my combat wing here on my own, launching it on my own and uh, having a great time. So yeah, I'm going to turn this on and show you exactly how it functions and then uh, take it from there. Okay, so effectively what I've got here it's easy if I show you with these two controllers that have been removed. Is you've got one controller inside and you've got one controller outside. And all I've done is basically turn one upside down, attached it to the other one, and it sits like that on top. So when you've done that, and I'll run through how to connect them and all that sort of stuff, you end up with this. And using a harness or a tray, you can now have full control. So what you've got here is elevator, up and down, aileron, left and right, rudder, right and left, and throttle. Obviously I've got that killed for safety reasons. So, um, the best controller to use is a digital controller with these digital switches here because otherwise you end up having the adjusters, the trim adjusters on the stick itself. Now you can still use these but obviously once it's upside down it's a little bit harder to access your trim. So if you do have a digital controller I'd recommend using one so that the trimmers can remain on the controller. Now when you're finished the only thing that changes is the rudder trim which is reversed. Now you could take this trim out and rotate it around if you wanted to, otherwise I've just written on the controller here to remind me that it's in reverse uh, and and it has to be reversed in the computer of the uh, controller as well. Everything else stays exactly as it is. All your, your existing trims uh, and all your existing directions stay as they are. Um, the beautiful thing about this too is that once you get a bit of air you can basically pull up a little bit take your hand off briefly to adjust your trims to get yourself flying correctly without too much risk uh, or you can have someone else standing next to you to do that for you and you've still got full access to all of your controls flaps, uh, landing gear, dual rates uh, everything you would normally fly with um, and the same goes for helicopter flying as well this could be used just as successfully with helicopter flying uh, I haven't done it myself but I've done it on the simulator without too much grief and uh, yeah it works really well Okay, so things you're going to need in order to make this work uh, is not a lot of stuff. Um, I've used uh, four servo extension leads about uh, 30 centimeters long. 
uh, a soldering iron, uh, some tape, uh, a bit of heat shrink if you've got it, um, and I've just put a bit of foam on top of the handle. You could use anything that uh, feels comfortable for you to use. Um, if you're already a Mode 2 flyer, uh, you'll only need to extend two of the cables, so you'll only need two extension leads. Uh, the other thing you're going to need is a servo tray of some sort. Well, not a servo tray, a controller tray. Now, you can buy these already. Uh, a lot of the patent ship uh, guys use them. Uh, I've made my own. My cousin was kind enough to give me this harness, which is actually a, a backpack for diving. Uh, I'm wearing it back to front. Normally, this would be worn the other way around. And there would be a tank attached to it right here. It just happened to work out beautifully using this tray, which is just a lid from a knife box from a barbecue uh, with a couple of brackets. And that just slides in. Uh, you could convert a backpack, you could buy yourself a proper tray. Uh, I'm sure you could come up with something that would work quite well. And then all I've got is a bit of Velcro on the back of my controller and on the tray to keep it in place so it doesn't slip around and fall out if I knock it. And uh, it's very comfortable, and I rest my arm up against the, my side here, and then use my fingertips to fly. Um, uh, originally I thought it would be good to have your whole hand sitting on top and use your wrist, but there's actually a lot more control than your fingertips. So that's how I've been flying like that. Alright, well, so that's it for this video. I'm going to do another video very soon uh, with all the technical information on how to wire this up, how to pull the control apart. And uh, then I'll go out to my local field, show you how I'm flying, and yeah, hope uh, this has been helpful to some people out there, and uh, I'll see you all soon. See you later.